Chapter 1 Echoes from the Cosmos In the velvet tapestry of the night, where stars whispered ancient secrets, an anomaly breached the serene cosmic dance. Far beyond the orbit of Pluto, a speck of light moved against the celestial currents, its course set towards Earth. The discovery, made by an observatory nestled in the heart of the Chilean Andes, sent ripples through the global astronomical community. It was an object of immense proportions, unlike anything humanity had ever encountered. Dr. Elena Morales, lead astronomer at the observatory, watched the data stream in, her heart racing with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. The object's trajectory was deliberate, its speed controlled. This was no comet or asteroid. It was something else. Elena knew the implications of her discovery. She drafted a report, her hands trembling slightly as she typed. This was the moment every astronomer dreamed of, yet it carried a weight she hadn't anticipated. News of the approaching spacecraft spread like wildfire. Within hours the world's eyes turned skyward, and what had been a quiet night at the observatory became the epicenter of a global event. Governments convened emergency meetings, scientists debated theories, and the public's imagination ran wild. Was this first contact, or something more ominous? Elena found herself thrust into the spotlight, fielding calls from international agencies, her expertise suddenly invaluable. Yet, amid the chaos, she remained focused on the data, trying to decode the intentions of the unknown visitors. The spacecraft's signals were unlike any human technology, a complex blend of patterns that defied immediate understanding. As days turned into weeks, anticipation grew. The world's military forces stood on high alert, a silent testament to the fear of the unknown. Peaceful groups rallied for a welcoming approach, urging caution and diplomacy. The debate raged on social media, in news outlets, and at dinner tables worldwide. Were these visitors friend or foe? In the observatory's control room, Eleanor and her team worked tirelessly, their eyes glued to screens displaying the spacecraft's slow approach. The object was now close enough for detailed observation, revealing a structure both elegant and alien. It was a marvel of engineering, bristling with what appeared to be antennas and sensors, yet its purpose remained inscrutable. Elena couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder. This was a pivotal moment in human history, a testament to the vast, unexplored mysteries of the universe. Yet, the beauty of the discovery was overshadowed by the growing tension on Earth. The approaching spacecraft, a harbinger of change, had unwittingly become a mirror, reflecting humanity's hopes and fears back upon itself. As the spacecraft entered the outer edges of Earth's orbit, the world held its breath. What would come next? Peaceful contact or confrontation? Eleanor knew that the answer lay in understanding, in the patient unravelling of the signals emanating from the visitor. It was a puzzle that humanity must solve together, a first step into the vast unknown that lay beyond the horizon. In the quiet moments of the night, as Eleanor gazed up at the stars, she felt a deep connection to the cosmos. The universe was speaking, and Earth was listening. The echoes from the cosmos had reached them, a call across the vast expanse of space. It was a call to explore, to understand, and perhaps to unite. This was the beginning of a journey, not just for Eleanor, but for all of humanity. Chapter 2 Shadows Over Earth The arrival of the Zolari spacecraft cast a literal and metaphorical shadow over Earth. As it stationed itself in geostationary orbit, its colossal size blocked out the stars a new, unblinking eye gazing down upon the planet. The world, which had been teetering on the brink of panic and wonder, now found itself unified in an uneasy vigil. In the bustling streets of New York, 
in the quiet villages of the French countryside, and across the endless savannas of Africa, people looked up, their differences momentarily forgotten. The Zalari had arrived, and with them, the future. Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov of the Russian Space Forces watched the live feed from the International Space Station, his brow furrowed in concentration. The spacecraft was unlike anything he, or any military strategist for that matter, had prepared for. Its design suggested a civilization at peace, yet the mere presence of such an advanced craft incited fear of a potential arms race, or worse, invasion. Meanwhile, at the United Nations, diplomats from around the globe convened in emergency sessions. The Secretary-General, a calm presence amid the storm of anxiety, urged for patience and peaceful outreach. Yet, behind the scenes, alliances were tested, with some nations advocating for a show of force as a deterrent. In the scientific community, excitement was tempered by caution. Dr. Morales, now a leading figure in the dialogue between science and policy, worked alongside linguists, engineers, and astrophysicists, attempting to decipher the Zolari's communications. The signals, a complex tapestry of sounds and lights, were broadcast continuously from the spacecraft, a puzzle that tantalized and frustrated in equal measure. The media frenzy reached a fever pitch, with speculation running rampant. Are we alone? had been answered. But why are they here, loomed larger than ever? Talk shows, podcasts, and online forums debated the Zolari's intentions, each theory more outlandish than the last. In a small, cluttered office at the SETI Institute, Dr. Hannah Kim, an expert in extraterrestrial communications, watched the signals with a mixture of awe and determination. To her, the pattern suggested a language, one that spoke of the Zolari's desire to communicate, not dominate. She reached out to Dr. Morales, proposing a collaborative effort to crack the code, a beacon of hope amidst the growing distrust. As governments fortified their defences and activists pleaded for peace, a group of hackers, intrigued by the challenge, managed to tap into the Zolari's broadcast. Their efforts, initially driven by curiosity, soon turned into a global collaboration. Coders, linguists, and amateur astronomers pooled their knowledge, sharing breakthroughs on encrypted forums, a testament to humanity's unyielding drive to understand. Back on the Zolari spacecraft, the crew observed Earth's reactions with a sense of apprehension. Their mission, one of peace and knowledge sharing, had been misconstrued. The captain, a venerable figure who had traversed the stars in search of kinship, pondered their next move. The Zolari had faced misunderstanding before, but never on such a scale. It was clear that their next actions would need to bridge the gap between fear and trust. As night fell across different parts of Earth, the Zolari spacecraft illuminated the sky with a display of lights, a spectacle that transcended language. It was a show of peace, an olive branch extended to all of humanity. For a moment, the world stood still, united in awe. The gesture sparked a global realization. The Zolari were not conquerors, but potential allies. In the quiet, after the light show, as the world processed what it had witnessed, the seeds of understanding began to take root. The shadows over Earth, both the fear of the unknown and the literal eclipse of the stars, started to recede. The Zolari had made their first move towards peaceful contact, and now it was Earth's turn to respond. Chapter 3 Signals in the Dark the Zolari's display of lights had been a turning point, a celestial gesture that calmed the tempest of fear and suspicion swirling around the globe. Yet, as the world awoke to a new day, the awe of the night before transitioned into a pressing question. How do we communicate back? 
Dr. Eleanor Morales found herself at the center of this unprecedented challenge. Together with Dr. Hannah Kim and a burgeoning team of international experts, they convened in a hastily arranged symposium on interstellar communication. The goal was ambitious, yet clear, to establish a dialogue with the Zalari. The team was an eclectic mix of minds, linguists fluent in the languages of the world, cryptographers who unraveled codes for a living, and scientists who had spent their careers listening to the whispers of the universe. Each brought a piece of the puzzle, but the Zolari's signals remained an enigma wrapped in a cosmic riddle. Meanwhile, the world's governments, still wary, agreed to a unified response under the aegis of the United Nations. A special committee was formed, comprising diplomats, military advisers, and scientists, tasked with overseeing Earth's approach to the Zolari. Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov was appointed as the military liaison, a role that tested his staunch pragmatism against the unfolding unknown. As the symposium progressed, the team dissected the Zolari's light show, concluding that it was not just a display of peace, but also a form of communication. The patterns of light seemed to correspond to basic mathematical principles, a universal language that transcended the boundaries of species and space. Energized by this revelation, the team set out to craft a response. The plan was audacious, to use a network of satellites to create a reciprocal display of lights over the Zolari spacecraft. The message would be simple, a mathematical greeting echoing the prime numbers sequence, a concept believed to be universal. The preparation was frantic, with the team working around the clock to coordinate the satellite network, a ballet of technology and hope. As the moment of transmission approached, the world watched with bated breath. The satellites aligned and a ribbon of light unfurled across the sky, a mirror to the Zolari's own greeting. It was humanity's handshake, stretched out across the void. Back on the Zolari spacecraft, the captain watched the Earth's response. A smile creased his aged face, the first sign of a breakthrough. The humans had understood their gesture, responding in kind. It was a moment of triumph, not just for the Zolari, but for the possibility of understanding between two vastly different species. However, the celebration was tempered by caution. Communication had been established, but understanding each other's languages and intentions remained a colossal task. The symposium continued its work, now with a renewed sense of purpose. The Zolari signals were revisited, this time with a focus on deciphering the deeper complexities of their language. On Earth, public opinion began to shift. The successful exchange of greetings, covered extensively by the media, sparked a global conversation about the possibilities of interstellar friendship and collaboration. Fear and suspicion lingered, but curiosity and hope started to pave the way for a new narrative. In the midst of this cautious optimism, a small encrypted message from the hackers who had first tapped into the Zolari's broadcast surfaced. They had made a breakthrough, deciphering a fragment of the Zolari's communications. The message was simple yet profound. We come in peace, seeking kinship and knowledge. This revelation, though unofficial, spread quickly, adding momentum to the efforts at the symposium. The team, inspired by the hackers' success, redoubled their efforts, driven by the belief that understanding was within reach. Chapter 4. A World on Edge In the aftermath of Earth's luminescent greeting, a fragile thread of hope was woven between the planet and the Zolari spacecraft, hovering silently above. Yet, beneath the surface of this nascent connection, the world remained on edge. The fear of the unknown, like a shadow at dusk, lingered in the hearts of many, casting doubt over the intentions of these cosmic visitors. Dr. Eleanor Morales, 
now a beacon of the effort to bridge two worlds, felt the weight of humanity's hopes and fears on her shoulders. With each breakthrough, the possibility of a misstep loomed larger, a wrong move that could shatter the delicate peace that was beginning to form. The United Nations, recognizing the gravity of the situation, called for a global summit on extraterrestrial contact. It was an unprecedented gathering of world leaders, scientists and diplomats, convened to forge a unified approach to the Zalari presence. The summit would be held in Geneva, a city with a long history of diplomacy and peace. Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov, reflecting on his new role as a military liaison, found himself torn between his duty to protect and the growing belief in the Zalari's peaceful intentions. The military globally remained on high alert, a necessary precaution, but one that Ivanov hoped would not provoke unnecessary conflict. As the summit approached, Dr. Morales and Dr. Kim, along with their international team, worked tirelessly to decode more of the Zalari's messages. The initial breakthrough, sparked by the hacker's interception, had opened a door, but the language of the Zalari was complex, a tapestry of sounds, lights, and perhaps even concepts beyond human understanding. In a world buzzing with speculation, the role of the media became increasingly pivotal. Journalists from around the globe converged on Geneva, each vying to uncover the next piece of the story. Amidst this frenzy, a few voices called for calm, reminding the world of the importance of patience and the historic opportunity for peace. The Global Summit on Extraterrestrial Contact was a spectacle of diplomacy. The grand halls of the United Nations office in Geneva were filled with delegates, each representing their people's hopes and fears. The Secretary-General opened the summit with a powerful speech, urging unity and caution. We stand at the threshold of a new era, he proclaimed. Let us step through it together as one humanity. The discussions were intense, with debates on how to communicate, negotiate, and, if necessary, defend. Yet, through it all, a consensus began to emerge. The world would extend a hand of friendship to the Zalari, seeking peaceful relations and mutual understanding. A special envoy, comprising scientists, diplomats, and cultural experts, would be established to lead the efforts. Meanwhile, in the quiet of her office, Dr. Morales received a breakthrough. A sequence of the Zalari's signals had been decoded, revealing a message of profound simplicity and depth. In the vastness of the universe, kinship is the harbor of life. It was a philosophical statement, one that resonated with the team's hopes for what this first contact could become. As the summit drew to a close, the delegates agreed on a declaration of peaceful intent a document to be transmitted to the Zalari, outlining Earth's desire for peaceful coexistence and collaboration. The world, for all its differences and divisions, had found common ground in the face of the extraordinary. Chapter 5. Misfires and Mistakes The transmission of Earth's declaration of peaceful intent towards the Zalari spacecraft marked a pivotal moment in human history, a gesture laden with the hopes of billions for a peaceful future. Yet, the path to understanding and trust is often fraught with setbacks. Chapter 5 unfolds in the shadow of such a setback, a stark reminder of the fragility of peace in the face of fear and misunderstanding. The Zalari, for their part, received the declaration with the gravity it deserved. The captain, a seasoned navigator of the cosmos who had seen civilizations both rise and falter on the precipice of contact, regarded the message as a beacon of hope. They prepared a response, one that would signify their willingness to engage, to share, and to learn from humanity. However, before this response could be sent, an incident on Earth threatened to unravel the fragile threads of trust that had begun to weave 
between the two species. In a remote part of the globe, a military installation, acting on outdated orders and fueled by a cocktail of fear and suspicion, mistakenly identified a Zolari communication probe as a threat. The probe, designed for atmospheric study and communication enhancement, drifted too close to Earth, triggering an automated defense system. The result was catastrophic, a misfire that led to the destruction of the probe, an act that, though accidental, bore the heavy semblance of aggression. The news of the incident spread like wildfire, igniting a storm of speculation and fear. The global community, which had just begun to embrace the possibility of peaceful coexistence, found itself teetering on the edge of panic. The mistake, born from a failure to fully dismantle the war machinery of the past, was a sobering reminder of the dangers of misunderstanding and the lethal legacy of fear. Dr. Elena Morales, who had become a symbol of the peaceful outreach effort, felt the weight of the setback deeply. The incident was not just a misfire of weapons, but a misfire of the very ethos she had been championing. With the world watching, she knew that the response to this mistake would define the future course of human Zolari relations. In an emergency session of the United Nations, delegates convened to address the crisis. The air was thick with tension, the sense of progress made now overshadowed by the spectre of conflict. Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov, who had first-hand knowledge of the military's capabilities and shortcomings, provided a crucial perspective. He advocated for transparency and accountability, arguing that the incident, though regrettable, offered a vital lesson in the necessity for cooperation and the dismantling of automated defense systems. The decision was made to publicly acknowledge the mistake, to extend an apology to the Zolari, and to invite them to a dialogue about how to prevent such incidents in the future. It was a risky move, one that required humility and the willingness to expose vulnerabilities, but it was rooted in the belief that honesty would pave the way to trust. Meanwhile, Dr. Morales and her team, in collaboration with Dr. Kim and the global communication effort, worked to craft a message to the Zolari. It was a message of regret, of commitment to peace, and of the earnest desire to learn from the incident. The message was also a plea for understanding, an acknowledgement of humanity's imperfections, and an invitation to continue the dialogue. The Zolari's response to the incident and Earth's apology was awaited with bated breath. The captain, understanding the complexities of first contact and the propensity for mistakes, chose to view the incident as a teachable moment. The response, when it came, was one of forgiveness and a reaffirmation of their desire for peaceful relations. The Zolari offered insights into their technology to help prevent future misunderstandings and proposed a joint Earth-Solari initiative to explore ways of enhancing communication and safety. Chapter 6. Through the Veil of Fear In the soft glow of dawn, the Harmony Gardens shimmered with an otherworldly beauty. The aftermath of the misfire incident had left its mark on the collective psyche of both Earth and Zolari a stark reminder of the fragile line between peace and peril. Yet, amidst the uncertainty, a profound transformation was underway, one that would redefine the future of interstellar relations. Dr. Elena Morales, standing at the edge of the garden, watched the sunrise illuminate the path that wound its way through the vibrant flora of two worlds. Beside her, Torin, a Zolari linguist, and her counterpart in the Earth Zolari Liaison Office, Ezlo, observed the Earth's star crest the horizon with a mixture of fascination and contemplation. Their friendship, forged in the crucible of crisis, had become a symbol of the potential for understanding and unity. 
the incident. It could have undone everything, Eleanor murmured, her voice barely above a whisper, as if afraid to disturb the tranquility of the morning. Torin nodded, his gaze still fixed on the rising sun. Yet it did not. It has shown us the importance of empathy, of striving to see beyond our fears. That is where true strength lies. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov, now serving as the military adviser to the Ezilo. His presence, once a symbol of Earth's readiness for conflict, had evolved into one of commitment to peace. The Council has agreed to the disarmament initiative, he announced, a hint of relief in his tone. Automated defence systems will be decommissioned. It's a start. Elena smiled, the tension easing from her shoulders. A start, yes, but there's so much more to do. The communication protocol with the Zalari, it's still in its infancy. We need to ensure nothing like this ever happens again. The trio made their way along the path, their conversation turning to the future. The establishment of the Eslo had been a monumental step, but the road ahead was fraught with challenges. Misunderstandings, deeply ingrained fears, and the remnants of old prejudices threatened to derail the fragile peace. As they reached the centre of the garden, where the earthly and Zalari plants intertwined most closely, they found a group of children, human and Zalari, laughing and playing together, oblivious to the divisions that had once seemed insurmountable. Watching them, Eleanor felt a surge of hope. Perhaps, Torin said, following her gaze, it is not we who will bridge the gap between our worlds, but them, for they will grow not knowing fear of the other, but only the joy of shared discovery. The words resonated with Eleanor, a poignant reminder of the stakes. This garden, a testament to cooperation, to the beauty that could arise from the blending of worlds, was just the beginning. As the day progressed, the garden became a hub of activity. Scientists, diplomats, and citizens of both species came together to discuss, learn, and plan for the future. The air was alive with the sounds of myriad languages, the sharing of ideas, and the laughter of newfound friendships. By the time the stars began to emerge, dotting the sky with points of light, the garden was aglow with bioluminescent zelari plants and softly lit earthly pathways. Eleanor, Torin, and Alexei stood together once more, looking up at the sky, where the faint outline of the Zalari spacecraft could be seen. In the end, it's not just about avoiding conflict, Eleanor said, her voice steady and sure. It's about building something new, something better, together. The night air hummed with the promise of tomorrow, a future where Earth and Zalari, through the veil of fear, had found a common path. And as the first diplomatic envoy to the Zalari spacecraft was announced, a mission of peace and partnership, it was clear that this was only the beginning of a grand interstellar adventure. Through the efforts of those like Eleanor, Torin, and Alexei, the foundations of a lasting peace were being laid, a peace that would be nurtured in the hearts of the next generation, both human and Zalari, who played among the stars. Chapter 7. The Olive Branch The air was crisp with the promise of a new beginning as Dr. Eleanor Morales made her way through the bustling corridors of the Earth Zalari Liaison Office, ESLO, her steps echoing softly on the polished floor. Today marked the unveiling of the Harmony Garden's latest edition, a collaborative project that had become a labor of love and a symbol of the burgeoning trust between Earth and the Zalari. As she approached the gardens, the sound of laughter and conversation filled the air, a testament to the growing camaraderie among the staff and visitors from both worlds. The Harmony Gardens, once a quiet space of contemplation, had transformed into a vibrant meeting place where ideas and cultures intertwined as seamlessly as the flora it housed. At the heart of the garden, 
stood the new exhibit, a greenhouse unlike any other. Its transparent walls shimmered with a soft, iridescent glow, housing a collection of plants from Earth and Zalari, carefully selected to thrive together in a shared ecosystem. Elena paused at the entrance, taking a moment to admire the result of months of collaboration with Torin, her Zalari counterpart, and a team of botanists from both planets. Torin joined her, his eyes reflecting the myriad colors of the greenhouse. It's more beautiful than I imagined, he said, his voice filled with a quiet pride. Elena nodded, her thoughts drifting to the early days of the project, fraught with challenges and skepticism, convincing the Eslo's leadership to fund a greenhouse that blended earthly and Zolari botany had been no small feat, nor had been ensuring the plant's compatibility. Yet standing before the culmination of their efforts, all doubts evaporated. The opening ceremony was a simple affair, yet deeply meaningful. Representatives from Earth and Zolari, along with members of the Interstellar Diplomatic Corps, gathered in the gardens, their diverse appearances a vivid mosaic of the galaxy's inhabitants. Elena and Torin were tasked with addressing the assembly, a duty that filled Eleanor with a mix of honor and nervous anticipation. As she stepped forward, Eleanor surveyed the crowd, her heart buoyed by the sight of so many faces turned towards her in unity. She spoke of the journey that had led them to this moment, the misfires and misunderstandings, the shared fears and hopes, and ultimately the realization that cooperation was not just possible, but essential. Torin's speech complemented hers perfectly, weaving tales of Zolari lore with visions of a future crafted together. He spoke of the Harmony Gardens not just as a place, but as a concept, a living testament to the power of empathy and collaboration. The ceremony concluded with the ceremonial planting of a tree, a species engineered to thrive in both Earth and Zolari conditions, its roots a tangible representation of their intertwined destinies. The crowd erupted in applause as the first shovelful of soil was turned, a sound that resonated with the promise of new growth. As the day gave way to evening, the gardens became the backdrop for a celebration unlike any before. Music filled the air, a blend of earthly melodies and Zolari harmonics that danced together in a symphony of unity. Food and drink from both worlds were shared, each dish a discovery, each sip a bridge between cultures. Yet for Eleanor, the true magic lay in the quieter moments, the shared smiles, the exchange stories, the laughter that knew no language barrier. It was in these moments that the true meaning of the Harmony Gardens was revealed. Not just as a space where plants grew, but where relationships blossomed, understanding deepened, and a new chapter of interstellar friendship was written. As the stars twinkled above, Elena found Torin gazing out at the assembled crowd, a look of wonder on his face. What are you thinking? she asked, joining him at his side. I'm thinking that this, he gestured to the gardens, the people, the entire evening, is the beginning of something remarkable. We've extended the olive branch, and it has been warmly received. Elena smiled, her gaze lingering on the greenhouse that stood as a beacon of hope in the twilight. Yes, the olive branch, she echoed, her heart full. And from it, a new world grows. Together, they turned back to the celebration, to the mingling of Earth and Zolari, to the future they were building. One conversation, one shared laugh, one olive branch at a time. Chapter 8 Harmonizing Horizons The sun dipped low on the horizon, casting long shadows across the Harmony Gardens, now a symbol of Earth and Zolari cooperation. Dr. Elena Morales walked beside Dr. Arav Singh, a leading engineer in renewable energy systems, through the garden paths. They were discussing the final preparations for integrating Zolari energy technology 
into Earth's grid, a project that had the potential to revolutionize the planet's approach to power. Are you sure the systems are compatible? Elena asked, her brow furrowed with concern. The implications of their work were monumental, and the margin for error was non-existent. Arav nodded, his confidence unshaken. We've run every simulation, Eleanor. The Zolari tech harmonizes with ours better than we hoped. It's like finding a long-lost piece of a puzzle. Their conversation was a blend of technical jargon and hopeful speculation, emblematic of the broader dialogue between Earth and the Zolari. As they reached the heart of the garden, where the earthly and Zolari flora intertwined, they found Torin waiting with a delegation of Zolari scientists. The meeting that followed was a convergence of minds and ideas. Torin, acting as a bridge between the two worlds, facilitated the exchange with a grace that belied the complexity of the task. Together, they outlined the roadmap for the energy project, marking a significant step toward a shared future. Meanwhile, across the globe, cultural exchange programs were in full swing, fostering a deeper understanding between the people of Earth and their Zolari counterparts. From art exhibitions, showcasing Zolari visual symphonies to earthly music concerts attended by Zolari enthusiasts, the cultural exchange was as vibrant and dynamic as the Harmony Gardens themselves. One such program was an interstellar culinary festival where Eleanor found herself one evening, surrounded by the aromas and flavors of Earth and Zolari cuisine. As she sampled a dish that was a fusion of ingredients from both worlds, she marveled at the journey that had brought them to this point. The festival was a celebration of diversity, a testament to the richness that comes from sharing and blending cultures. The culmination of these efforts was the inaugural symposium of the Interstellar Academy, an institution founded to educate the next generation of leaders, scientists, and artists. Eleanor, invited to speak at the symposium, stood before a diverse audience of Earthlings and Zolari, her heart pounding with a mixture of excitement and responsibility. Her speech, woven from personal anecdotes and visions for the future, spoke to the heart of the partnership between Earth and the Zolari. She talked about the Harmony Gardens, the Energy Integration Project, and the cultural exchanges. But more importantly, she spoke of the underlying values that made all these endeavors possible – empathy, curiosity, and a shared commitment to a better future. As the symposium progressed, students from both worlds presented their collaborative projects. Each presentation was a glimpse into a future where Earth and Zolari not only coexisted, but thrived together. The projects ranged from environmental restoration initiatives to new forms of interstellar communication technology, each embodying the spirit of innovation and cooperation. The day concluded with a ceremony under the stars, where attendees gathered in the Harmony Gardens. The sky was a tapestry of constellations known to both Earth and Zolari, a reminder of the vast and shared universe they inhabited. Standing beside Torin and Arav, Eleanor looked out at the faces, illuminated by the soft glow of bioluminescent plants and the gentle light of technological lanterns. The Harmony Gardens, alive with conversation and laughter, was a testament to the progress they had made and the challenges they had overcome. This, Torin said, gesturing to the gardens and the people within, is harmony, not just a blending of technologies or cultures, but of horizons, ours and yours. Elena smiled, her eyes reflecting the starlight. And it's just the beginning, she replied, her voice filled with hope. Together, we're not just reaching for the stars, we're creating a future among them. As the evening wore on, the garden became a microcosm of the potential that lay in earth Zolari cooperation. The challenges ahead were many, but in that moment, under the vast expanse of the universe, anything seemed possible. 
They were harmonizing horizons, one step at a time, building a legacy that would endure for generations to come. Chapter 9. Unity's Dawn as the first light of dawn caressed the skyline of the newly inaugurated Interstellar Academy, a sense of anticipation filled the air. Today wasn't just another day. It was the day the Festival of Stars would commence, celebrating the first anniversary of Earth's formal alliance with the Zolari. Dr. Elena Morales, her heart a mix of excitement and nerves, stood overlooking the Academy's vast courtyard, transformed overnight into a vibrant mosaic of stalls, stages, and displays representing both Earth and Zolari cultures. Beside her, Torin, clad in a garment that shimmered with the changing light, shared her sense of wonder. Do you think they're ready for this? he asked, gesturing towards the Academy's students, who were among the festival's main organizers. Elena smiled. They were born ready. It's us who needed to catch up. The Festival of Stars was more than a celebration. It was a showcase of what the Alliance had achieved and a glimpse into the future it promised. The courtyard buzzed with activity as final preparations were made and the first guests began to arrive, their faces alight with curiosity. Among the attendees was Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov, who had traded his military uniform for civilian clothes, a symbol of the peace that now reigned. He joined Eleanor and Torin, looking around with a sense of satisfaction. Who would have thought, he mused, that we'd get to see this day? The festival officially began with a ceremony that mirrored the partnership's spirit. Leaders from Earth and the Zolari addressed the crowd, their speeches a testament to the journey of mutual understanding and respect they had embarked on. But it was the performance that followed a fusion of earthly music and Zolari harmonics that truly captured the essence of the festival. The music, transcending language and species, filled the courtyard, weaving a tapestry of sound that was both haunting and uplifting. As the day progressed, Eleanor, Torin, and Alexei wandered through the festival. They watched demonstrations of Zolari technology that could heal Earth's ravaged environments and sampled dishes that blended ingredients from both worlds in ways that delighted the senses. They viewed art installations that told stories of unity and hope and listened to lectures on the possibilities of future cooperation in science, exploration, and diplomacy. But it was in the smaller, quieter moments that the true depth of the festival's impact was felt. Elena watched as a group of Earth children and Zolari younglings played together, their laughter a sweet melody that spoke of a future where differences were celebrated, not feared. She saw old prejudices melt away as people from both worlds shared stories and dreams under the banner of friendship and mutual respect. As night fell, the festival reached its climax with the unveiling of a joint earth Zolari project, a holographic map of the galaxy highlighting not only their respective homeworlds, but also the roots of their explorers, traders, and diplomats. It was a symbol of of their shared destiny, a promise of the adventures and challenges they would face together. The map's activation was met with applause and awe, but for Eleanor, the true highlight came afterwards as people from both worlds gathered around the map, pointing out potential sites for joint missions, discussing the mysteries they hoped to solve together. Standing there, amidst the crowd, Elena felt a profound sense of accomplishment and hope. The festival, with its blend of cultures, ideas, and dreams, was a mirror of what they had all worked so hard to achieve, a universe not divided by fear, but united in wonder. As the festival drew to a close, Elena, Torin, and Alexei found themselves back in the courtyard now quiet, under the starlit sky. They looked up at the stars, 
those ancient beacons of light that had guided explorers and dreamers for millennia. We've made it this far, Elena said, her voice soft but filled with conviction. Together, there's no limit to how far we can go. Torin nodded, his gaze still fixed on the heavens. Among the stars, we have found our unity, he agreed. And as they stood there, a human, a Zalari, and a soldier turned peacemaker, they understood that this was just the beginning. Ahead lay a future crafted by shared dreams and the promise of dawn, a dawn that for the first time they would greet together as partners among the stars. Hash, hash, hash. Chapter 10 Among the Stars The night air was cool and crisp, wrapping the Harmony Gardens in a serene embrace as Dr. Eleanor Morales walked its paths, a sense of accomplishment and introspection guiding her steps. The Festival of Stars had concluded, leaving behind a lingering aura of unity and shared purpose. The gardens, a symbol of Earth and Zalari cooperation, were quiet now, a stark contrast to the day's vibrant festivities. Elena's thoughts were interrupted by the soft sound of footsteps approaching. She turned to find Torin, his presence a comforting constant in the whirlwind of their collaborative efforts. Beside him, Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Ivanov, whose transformation from a military strategist to an advocate for peace had been nothing short of remarkable. We received a message, Torin began, his voice carrying a weight that immediately captured Elena's attention. From the Zalari High Council. Elena's heart skipped a beat. Communication from the High Council was rare and always significant. What does it say? she asked her mind racing through the possibilities. It's an invitation, Alexei chimed in, a note of awe in his voice that Eleanor had seldom heard. For humanity to join the Galactic Council, a consortium of civilizations dedicated to fostering peace and cooperation across the stars. The implications of such an invitation were profound. The Galactic Council was a legend, a collective of advanced civilizations that had achieved a level of harmony and understanding beyond anything Earth had dared to dream. To be invited was not just an honor. It was a recognition of Earth's efforts to rise above its tumultuous past towards a future of interstellar friendship and collaboration. Elena felt a rush of emotions, from disbelief to pride, and finally to a deep, resonating hope. This is our chance, she said, her voice steady with resolve, our chance to show that we're ready, that we've learned from our history and from our friends. She glanced at Torin, whose smile was as bright as the stars above. The news spread quickly, igniting a wave of excitement and speculation across Earth. The prospect of joining the Galactic Council sparked debates, dreams, and a flurry of preparations. Humanity stood on the cusp of a new era, and the responsibility of that moment was not lost on its leaders or its people. As the days passed, a delegation was formed, comprising diplomats, scientists, artists, and representatives from various facets of human and Zalari society. Eleanor, Torin, and Alexei were, unsurprisingly, among those chosen to embark on this historic mission. The night before their departure, the trio returned to the Harmony Gardens. The stars shone brightly overhead, a canopy of endless mysteries and wonders that had watched over Earth and Zalari alike for eons. We're about to step into a much larger world, Torin said, looking up at the sky with a sense of reverence. But no matter how far we go, this place, this moment, will remain with us. It's where we learn to look beyond our differences and see the potential of what we could achieve together. Eleanor nodded, her thoughts turning to the journey ahead. Among the stars, there are bound to be challenges, disagreements, even conflicts, she mused. 
but if we've learned anything, it's that understanding and cooperation are the keys to overcoming them. Alexei, who had seen the transformation of Earth's defenses into symbols of peace, added, We're stepping into the unknown, but we're not doing it alone. We have each other, and we have the lessons of the Harmony Gardens. As they stood together, a human, a Zolari, and a soldier turned peacemaker, the boundaries between their worlds seemed insignificant. They were united by a common vision, a shared dream of a future where civilizations could coexist in peace and mutual respect. The next morning, as their ship ascended into the sky, bound for the Galactic Council, Eleanor looked back at Earth one last time. The planet, with all its beauty and complexity, was a testament to what could be achieved when beings chose to reach out, to understand, and to cooperate. Among the stars, Earth's delegates carried not just the hopes of their own world, but the promise of unity's dawn, a promise that, like the first light of morning, held the potential to illuminate the darkest corners of the galaxy. And so, as their ship crossed the threshold into the vastness of space, Eleanor, Torin, and Alexei faced the future with determination and hope. For in their hearts, they knew that together, among the stars, they could build a legacy of peace and understanding that would echo through the ages. <laughs>